Hi guys. Um, during this video, we are going to go through the solutions to the classwork to use with your feedback. So we've got mixed questions, and first one up was solve 3x plus 7y equals negative 2, 4x plus 3y equals negative 9. So we have got a pair of simultaneous equations, and what we need to do for them is we need to get rid of one of our unknown variables, x or y. Unfortunately, we don't have a variable in each of the equations that is the same. I've got 3x and 4x, and then I've got 7y and 3y. So I need to somehow make one of these the same. So I'm always going to start off the same way. I am going to label my equations. What I'll do is I'll do it all over here. So I've got 3x plus 7y equals negative 2 and 4x plus 3y equals negative 9. So I've got equation 1 and equation 2. And in order to get these to be one of my variables the same, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to choose to get rid of the y. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 3 and equation 2 by 7. And remember, it comes from there. So I'm going to multiply everything. 3 times 3x is going to give me 9x plus 21y equals negative 6 and 28x plus 21y equals negative 60. Then I'm going to label these so I've got 3 and 4 and now I've got a plus 21y and a plus 21y. So I'm now in a position where I am able to get rid of one of the variables. How am I going to do that? Well, I've got the same sign, plus and plus. So I'm going to be able to subtract. And I'm going to do 4, take away 3. So 28x take away 9x is going to give me 19x. 21y, take away 21y is going to cancel out. And negative 63, subtract negative 6. Be careful with your negative numbers. Becomes add 6. So that is going to be negative 57. I want x on its own. So I need to do negative 57 over 19 so x is equal to negative 3. Once I've got x I can then substitute that back into any of my equations. I'm going to choose to substitute it into equation 1. So I've got <clears throat> excuse me, 3x plus 7y equals negative 2. So 3 times negative 3, add 7y, equals negative 2. So that's negative 9. Again, watch your negatives. 2. Letters left, numbers right. So it's negative 2, add 9 this time. So 7y equals 7. y is equal to 7 over 7. So y is equal to 1. As always, at the end, just state both of your answers. x equals negative 3 and y equals 1. For the second one, we've got solve 4 bracket x plus 3 plus 2 bracket x subtract 1 equals 4. 
And the first thing we need to do is expand our brackets. We multiply everything inside the bracket by what's on the outside. So I've got 4x plus 12 plus 2x subtract 2 equals 4. At this point, you can just start moving things about, letters left, numbers right. I like to collect my terms first because it makes it easier. To start manipulating things it's now in a nice familiar position so i've got 6x equals letters left numbers right opposite side opposite operation so 6x equals negative 6 x equals negative 6 over 6 so in this case x equals negative one. Number three, given that f of x is equal to x squared plus three, part a we want to evaluate f of negative four. So I've replaced the x in the bracket with negative 4. So all I'm going to do is replace x on the other side with negative 4. Remember, a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So f of negative 4 is equal to 19. Part B. Find t when f of t equals 52. So we're still working with f of x equals x squared plus 3. We have been told that f of t equals 52. I'm going to use the same logic as part a. If I've also replaced x with t, then we can also say that t squared plus 3 is also equal to f of t. Which means that, I quite like writing it, if we rearrange it, t squared plus 3 is equal to f of t, and we also know that f of t equals 52. So we can say then that t squared add 3 equals 52, it's now in a familiar position. Letters left, numbers right. T squared equals 49. T is going to be the square root of 49. So T is going to be, and it can be 7 or negative 7. Because remember, negative 7 squared is also 49. Number four, we've got two fridge mag magnets are mathematically similar. One magnet is four centimetres long and the other is 10 centimetres long. The area of the smaller magnet is 18 centimetres squared. Calculate the area of the larger magnet. So the big clue here is the word similar. So I know I'm going to have to need a scale factor. So it's going to be new, <coughs> excuse me, over old. Scale factor is linear, so I'm going to take the distances. So I've got 4 and 10. I'm told that the smaller magnet is 18 centimetres squared. So this is going to be the old, and the larger one is the new. So I've got 10 over 4, which I am going to simplify to 5 over 2. That's my scale factor. I'm working with area, so I need my area scale factor. So my area scale factor is equal to my scale factor squared. So I'm going to substitute my scale factor in 5 over 2 squared, which is going to be 25 over 4. How do I do that? Well, it's 5 times 5. 
Top times top, bottom times bottom, 25 over 4. My new area, my new area is my area scale factor multiplied by my old area. So that's going to be 25 over 4 multiplied by 18. So my new area is 112.5. And remember, it needs units. We're dealing in centimetres. We're dealing with area. So it's centimetres squared. Number five, we've got an inequality. And remember, it works roughly the same way as an equation. There might be one change we have to make. We might come to it. But first, we need to get rid of this bracket. So we've got 2 take away 4 bracket x subtract 3 is less than x plus 5. So I'm going to have 2 subtract 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3, positive 12 is less than x plus 5. At this point, I want to. I collect my terms, so I'm going to have negative 4x plus 14, x plus 5. Letters left, numbers right, so that's going to come over, and this is going to come over, so I'm going to have negative 4x subtract x is less than 5 subtract 14. There's quite a lot of negative numbers in this one. So I've got negative 5x is less than negative 9. I want x on its own, so I need to divide by negative 5. I'm dividing by a negative number, so I need to turn the sign around. So it becomes negative 9 over negative 5. Two negatives make a positive, so x is any number that is greater than 9 over 5. And remember, if you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number to get x on its own, the sign switches around. Number six, we have got two knives and three forks have a total cost of £1.20. Three knives and five forks have a total cost of £1.90. Find the cost of each knife and each fork. So it's not instantly obvious, but what we have here is really two equations. We've got two knives and three forks equals 1.20. Three knives and five forks equals £1.90. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the knives. I'm going to make them X and the forks. I'm going to make them Y. I need to set up my equation. So I've got two knives. So 2X plus three forks, three Y equals 1.2. And then I've got 3x plus 5y equals 1.9. From there, I'm just going to follow my usual process. Again, I don't have anything that's the same, so I need to multiply. This time it's going to be by 5 and 3. And remember, we get the 5 from there, and we get the 3 from here. So, 5 times 2x is going to give me 10x plus 15y equals 6.0. 
and for the second one we've got 3 times 3x is 9x plus 15y is equal to and we've got 5.7 relabel them so we've got 3 and 4 I've got the same sign, so same sign, subtract. So this time I'm going to do 3, take away 4. I'm going to try and eliminate as many negatives as possible. So that will leave me with 10x, take away 9x is going to give me x. 15y, take away 15y is going to leave me with nothing. 6.0, take away 5.7 is going to leave me with 0 0.3. And now I need to sub x equals 0 0.3. Again, I'm going to do it into the first equation because that's the smallest numbers. So we've got 2 times 0 0.3 add 3y equals 1.2. So 0 0.6 add 3y equals 1.2. 3y equals 1.2, take away 0 0.6. Remember, opposite side, opposite operation. So 3y is equal to 0 0.6. So y equals 0 0.6 over 3. So y equals 0 0.2. The last thing I'm going to do is I've got x equals 0 0.3 y equals 0 0.2. The actual question is said, find the cost of each knife and fork. So this is why up here I've got my wee key telling me that knives are x. So my knives cost 30 pence and my forks cost 20 pence. Hey, number seven, John needs an ironing board. He sees one in the catalog with measurements as shown in the diagram. When the iron board is set up, two similar triangles are formed. Again, that word is similar. John wants an ironing board, which is at least 80 centimetres in length. Does this ironing board meet Mick's requirements? I don't know why his name has went from John to Mick, but we will go with it anyway. So we've got two similar triangles. What I quite like doing with these is I like to redraw the two triangles in the same way so that it's easy for me to work out where we are. So we've got 48 on the bottom. We're trying to find that bottom part out. So I flip this one upside down. I flip the top one upside down. That's 75 and that would be 40. Similar, so it's going to be scale factor. So I need my scale factor equals new over old. The larger of the two is going to be the new because it's got an unknown variable. So the smaller one is going to be the old. So I've got scale factor equals 75 over 40. So my scale factor. is 1.875 because we're using a calculator. The new length is equal to my scale factor multiplied by my old length. So I've got 1.875 multiplied by, this time I'm going to deal with the 48, so it's times 48, which is going to be 90. So we're asked the question, does this meet the requirements? We want an ironing board which is at least 80 centimetres, so that's going to be 90 centimetres. So the ironing board Is 
makes his requirements. Last one, we two functions are given below f of x equals x squared minus 4x, g of x equals 2x plus 7. If f of x equals g of x, show that x squared subtract 6x subtract 7 is equal to 0. So, this looks a lot more complicated than it is. If we break it down, we are told a few different things. We know that if we flip the first equation round, we've got x squared minus 4x is equal to f of x. We're also told that f of x is equal to g of x. And we're also told that g of x is equal to 2x plus 7. So if everything's equal to each other, then we can say that x squared subtract 4x is equal to 2x plus 7. Once I've got it to that point, well, I look at this 0 on the right hand side of the equals sign, and that suggests to me that everything's just been moved over to the left. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move everything over to the left. So it's going to be opposite side, opposite operation. I'm going to have x squared, subtract 4x, subtract 2x, subtract 7. Once I've moved everything over, I'm left with nothing. And then once I tidy everything up, I've got x squared, subtract 6x, subtract 7. It's still equal to 0. And we have shown it. Thanks very much for listening. I hope everybody has a champion day. This is Mr. Gillen signing off. Speak to you all soon.